Ever pondered upon the question, why do we need the grace of God? It's a query that has stirred the minds of philosophers, theologians, and seekers of truth alike. It's an age-old enigma, a universal curiosity that spans across cultures and time. The need for divine grace, it seems, is a fundamental aspect of the human condition. So, let's pause, reflect, and challenge our understanding. Dive into this spiritual journey as we explore the need for God's grace. But first, what is grace? What does it mean to us? Now, in a religious and spiritual context, grace is often defined as the love, kindness, and mercy bestowed upon us by the divine, or in this case, God. It's a gift that's given freely, not because we've earned it or because we deserve it, but simply because God desires for us to have it. This concept is vital in many spiritual paths because it underscores the notion of unconditional love and acceptance. It suggests that despite our faults, our missteps, our imperfections, we are still worthy of love, of mercy, of grace. This divine grace impacts our lives in profound ways. It provides comfort in times of distress, gives hope in moments of despair, and encourages us to strive for betterment. It serves as a reminder that we are not alone in our journey. Grace, as we understand, is the love and mercy given to us by God because God desires us to have it, not because of anything we have done to earn it. Remember the story of the prodigal son? It's a timeless tale that beautifully illustrates the concept of God's grace, even in the face of our biggest blunders. The story takes us back to a time where a father had two sons. The younger one, brimming with youthful audacity, asked his father for his share of the inheritance early. The father, though likely saddened by the request, granted it. Soon after, this young man set off to a distant land, leaving behind the safety and comfort of his father's home. In this far-off place, the son lived wildly, squandering his fortune on fleeting pleasures. But life has a way of teaching us lessons when we're most susceptible. The country fell into famine, and the son found himself destitute, forced to work as a swineherd. He was so hungry, he longed to fill his belly with the pods the pigs were eating. In his lowest moment, he realized the gravity of his actions. He remembered his father's house, where even the hired servants had more than enough to eat. So he made up his mind to return home, prepared to beg for his father's forgiveness, and asked to be taken on as a servant. Yet the father's reaction was nothing short of extraordinary. Seeing his son in the distance, the father ran to him, embraced him, and welcomed him home with a feast, rather than scorn or punishment. He declared, for this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. The story of the prodigal son encapsulates the essence of God's grace. Just like the father in the tale, God doesn't hold our mistakes against us. Instead, he welcomes us back with open arms, ready to celebrate our return rather than chastise us for our past. Just as the father in the story, God's grace is always available to us, regardless of our flaws and mistakes. What happens when we experience God's grace? Imagine a seed nestled in the soil, waiting for the right conditions to bloom. When the heavens open and the rain begins to fall, the seed soaks up the nourishment and something incredible happens. It begins to change, to grow, to reach towards the light. This is what God's grace does to us. It's a transformative experience akin to the metamorphosis of a caterpillar into a butterfly. As we receive God's grace, we begin to shed the layers of our old selves. Our perspectives change, our hearts soften and our minds open. We start to see the world through a lens of love and compassion, and we begin to understand that we are all interconnected, all part of the grand tapestry of life. One of the most profound impacts of God's grace is the peace it brings. It's a deep, calming peace that surpasses all understanding. It's like a mighty river that flows through our lives, washing away our worries, our fears, our guilt. We stop fighting against the current of life, and instead we start flowing with it. We learn to surrender, to let go, and to trust in the divine plan. Another beautiful gift of grace is forgiveness. It's not just about forgiving others, but also about forgiving ourselves. We all make mistakes, we all stumble and fall, but God's grace allows us to get up, dust ourselves off, and keep moving forward. It teaches us that our past does not define us and that every day is a new opportunity for growth and change. Finally, God's grace gives us a sense of purpose. It helps us to see that we are not just aimless wanderers in this vast universe, but rather we are here for a reason. We are here to learn, to grow, to love and to serve. We are here to make a difference, to leave a positive mark on this world. 
God's grace doesn't just change us, it transforms us. It brings us peace and a sense of purpose. How do we seek God's grace? This is a question that many of us have asked ourselves. Seeking grace is not as complicated as you might think. It all begins with a simple yet profound desire to connect with something greater than ourselves. Firstly, understand that seeking grace is not about bargaining or earning points with God. It's not about who can pray the longest or who can do the most good deeds. It's about authentic connection and surrender. It's about openness to receive and willingness to change. Prayer is one of the most common ways to seek God's grace. It's a direct line of communication with the divine. But remember, prayer is not just about asking for things. It's about expressing gratitude, seeking guidance and acknowledging God's presence in our lives. It's about creating a space within ourselves where grace can dwell. Humility is another key aspect in seeking God's grace. It's about recognizing our limitations, our weaknesses, and our need for help. It's about acknowledging that we don't have all the answers, and that's okay. It's about letting go of our ego and allowing God's grace to fill the void. Faith, too, is crucial in this journey. Faith is not about blind belief, it's about trust. It's about trusting in God's love and wisdom, even when things don't make sense. It's about holding on to hope, even in the midst of despair. Finally, a genuine desire to change and do good is essential. Grace is not just about receiving, it's also about giving. It's about becoming a channel of God's love and compassion. It's about striving to make a positive difference in the world, however small it may be. So seeking God's grace is not a one-time event, it's a continuous process, a lifelong journey. It's about growing, learning and evolving. It's about becoming the best version of ourselves, not just for our own sake, but also for the sake of others. Seeking God's grace requires humility, faith, prayer and a genuine desire to change and do good. Remember, God's grace is not a limited resource. It's a profound truth, one that's easy to overlook in our day-to-day -day lives, yet it's at the heart of our understanding of the divine. So let's delve into this concept of pervasive grace. God's grace is akin to the air we breathe, always present, always accessible. It's not something that's rationed out or restricted to a select few. It doesn't care about the time of day, the place you're in, or the circumstances you're facing. It's as boundless as the heavens and as unfathomable as the depths of the sea. Imagine a world where the sun shines only on those deemed worthy, where the rain falls only on the lands of the privileged. That's not how nature operates, and neither does God's grace. It's available to everyone, everywhere, at all times. It doesn't discriminate, it doesn't judge. It's there for the taking, whether you're a saint or a sinner, a king or a pauper. Now, consider this. Grace is not merely about receiving, it's also about transformation. It's a powerful, creative force that changes us from the inside out. It's the divine spark that ignites the flame of love, compassion and forgiveness within us. It's the gentle nudge that pushes us to be better, to do better. When we open our hearts and minds to grace, we allow it to work its magic. We invite it to heal our wounds, mend our brokenness, and fill us with a sense of peace and wholeness. We let it guide us on our journey, lighting our path with its radiant glow. In the end, our understanding of grace is like grasping at the wind. It's elusive, mysterious, beyond our full comprehension. But one thing is clear. God's grace is always available, always abundant, and always ready to transform us. It's a gift a blessing, a divine inheritance that's ours for the taking. All we need to do is reach out and embrace it. In conclusion, why do we need God's grace? To wrap it up, we've delved into the essence of grace, relived the tale of the prodigal son, and explored the profound impact of divine grace. The transformative power of God's grace is indeed remarkable. It shapes us, soothes us, bestows upon us a sense of purpose, and guides us towards our best selves. We need God's grace to transform us, to bring us peace, to give us a sense of purpose and to help us become the best versions of ourselves.